Hi, Gail Fugit here, President and CEO of the Advertising Research Foundation, and I'm thrilled to be here on the CES showroom floor, actually, which you can probably hear behind us, uh, with Rana Alkaloubi, who is the Chief Science Officer and the co-founder, importantly, of Affectiva, um, a really interesting company uh, that's all about bringing uh, something that's near and dear to my heart and at the ARF. Um, emotion to life, right? And being able to actually quantify emotion, but um, through sentiment analysis and, and facial coding and some new scientific uh, approaches um, that go really beyond biometrics. Um, so I want to, you clearly have such a passion for uh, this whole area of advertising, uh, which is one of the applications of the work that you do, and just from our conversations, just want to kick it off with um, what's your perspective on how advertising uh, works today and what you would like to see as an application of your technology to, uh, um, to that endeavor, right? That we're also passionate about. Absolutely. So um, the way we really see it is that your emotions drive every aspect of your life, from how you connect and engage with you know, people around you, to the content around you, to the products we care about so much, to the decisions you make on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I would say the way advertising works is that it presents you with an opportunity to engage with an idea or a product or a service um, and, and, I, and I'd say you know in the past it was all about you know an ad being you know viewable right right and today that's not enough there's so right. much content out there it really has to engage the audience right. and really connect with the person and so we're, we're very passionate about measuring that aspect of, of a connection right a consumer has with a brand or an ad right um, so in the area of measurement how how are how are your um, techniques and I mean here we are at CES right we have the wearables and right. the, the, the smart home and the Internet of Things we're going to be able to you know follow the consumer line the whole path to purchase um, with these really uh, important you know technological solutions um, how do you see those things fitting into you know traditional mix models and traditional measurement approaches I would say that ultimately um, this is all about finding the right context right for for a an advertiser to present to present their product and so what we really think the Internet of Things is going to bring to the table you know everything from things that are on you to things that are around you right um, it's going to allow people to understand your context how are you feeling what's you know what are you trying to achieve and then target you know better products and services to, right um, and so so, Rana, you are one of the uh, uh, most influential women to watch in the whole field of science and technology in 2014, and congratulations for that. I want to spend some time with you uh, having you tell your story. You know, where do you get your ideas, and how do you build your confidence uh, to say, you know, this, this, yeah, there's something here, I'm going to pursue this, and clearly since your, uh, this, this whole solution that you founded at Affectiva uh, was born born out of the MIT Media Lab, look, that takes time, I know, right? Right. And, and you know, while research and consumer packaged goods um, may be relatively fast moving, academic research is traditionally um, moving at a much slower pace, and um, of course there's much more um, scientific validation um, that, that goes into it. Um, so tell a little bit about your story, and um, in my eyes, you're just extremely young to have accomplished <laughs> what you have, I love that. Um, you know, love to be inspired by um, how did you decide to do what you did? Um, what, you know, did you have difficult times along the way? You know, where did your courage Absolutely. come from? And, you know, let's dive into that sure. a little bit. Um, so it's a career it all, story, right? It all started about 15 years ago when I really got fascinated by the idea of an emotionally intelligent computer. We spend tremendous amount of time with our technology, increasingly more, right, every day. And I felt like you know, this computer that I was really intimate with should know much more about me and should be adaptive to my mental and emotional state. And so I, I, I embarked on this journey to build an emotionally intelligent computer. And I was particularly fascinated by the face. So you're nodding and you're doing all yeah. these interesting expressions yes. with your face. A computer would be completely oblivious to that. And so yeah. I wanted to build a computer that can read these subtle emotions and, you know, understand how you're feeling and react to that in real time. Um, Along, you know, as I started building this machine, I um, stumbled into a, you know, into autism and got, fa you know, fascinated 
by the idea of leveraging this technology to help autistic kids. Yes. Um, so spent a number of years at MIT working on a project for autism and kind of building the initial initials of a Google Glass before Google Glass existed. Interesting. Um, and, and so the idea was a camera and you're interacting with a person and it would give you a real time feedback on the person's expressions. And twice a year we'd have um, a gathering for all our sponsors at MIT Media Lab and for like maybe three or four years we'd have Procter and Gamble and Unilever and you know Gillette and they'd all say why aren't you applying this technology in business and in advertising and product testing and so, so you kind of got pulled over to it kind of yeah, yeah. I think I think the tipping point It's always me, good to have demand. I kind of figured that out somewhere along the way, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I do feel there was a clear product market fit. And the tipping point for me was this idea that our, we can bring our technology to the world and it can change the way people do things. Yes. Especially in, in creatives. Like, I feel like, you, you know, it's almost like we have got, got to ends of the spectrum. The market researchers were all about the quantitative data and, and the outcome measures. And then the creatives that really want to go by their gut, right? And the concepts that they feel will connect the best with the audience. And I feel like our technology sits in the middle. Yeah. It, it kind of combines, you know, this subconscious, um, very visceral reaction to a yes. creative concept with the quantitative and the scientifically um, rooted data. And so. Yeah. That was kind of our value prop, if you like, and, and, and we can apply that throughout the life cycle of a, of, a, of a concept. You can take it from a storyboard or a concept all the way to finished film, and you can really see, you know, what's working, what's not. So, uh, Rana, that took, that, that's kind of a 15-year window, right? Just want to be clear, 15, not 50, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> You're a 15-year window, and um, so, to, how was it along the way, right? You know, it's it, it kind of like easy to look back on it and say, well, this is kind of what happened and, and kind of make sense of it all. That's a little bit been my experience. But talk, you know, share a little bit about how it was along the way. Because people that are listening to this today, some of them are, are three years into your journey, some are six, some are nine, right? Um, some are just at the beginning and just going like, wow, I have this great idea, but I don't, you know, I, I don't know definitely if I should dive say, out. What advice do you have and what was it like for you from the inside out? I think ultimately I have this passion that, that emotion sensing and emotion technology can really bring, can improve the way we connect with each other and with things around us. Yeah. And so I have this conviction that I want to get this technology out there. And it wasn't easy, like, you know, A, there's a lot of applications we can explore, so focusing has always been a Excellent challenge point. for yeah. us. Um, the other thing is you run into a lot of naysayers who will say, like, well, people won't emote or people won't turn their cameras on. Yeah. But, you know, you trailblaze and you show the value and people do it. So. Yeah. I mean, it certainly sounds like the connection to um, to business was important too. Applicate like like you learned back and forth. So you uh, you um, exposed yourself to that, or you made yourself available to that. Um, Absolutely. Which I think some people that are in academia and science are, are you know a little loath to do, right? Because that's a kind of a commercial application. It's a different. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've I've learned a lot over the past years, and I feel like I leaned into the opportunities. Right. It sounds uh, like it. Yes. I remember when we were doing our first fundraiser, um, our, our first potential investor sent us like an email asking for the BS. And the only BS we yeah. knew was bullshit, right? Yeah, right. We didn't know it was a balance sheet. So, yeah. so yeah. things like that. Yeah, I had right? to learn a lot learning of Learning curve, right? right? I love that. Right. That's right. excellent. Um, hats off to you for your tremendous accomplishments, Rana. And thank you so much for your time here. And we're so thrilled to have you as new members of the Advertising Research we Foundation. Are and we're excited about our journey going forward. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you.